Morning everyone, glad you could be with us again today to the St Andrews Church family. Um, welcome and to anyone else who's watching in from somewhere else or some later time, I'm glad that you could join us. Um, let's open with prayer. Lord, we give you praise for this opportunity. We praise you for your word. We praise you for the privilege of worship. And so we pray that uh, as we worship and spend this time together, today that we would know uh, you with us Lord we'd know your presence and your power in Jesus name Amen I've got another treat today um, Rachel and Philip are leading our worship with their family and we're going to go to them now with a couple of songs Is this with you? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our bubble. These are my children, Kendall and Jaden. There's two not here. And our daughter-in-law to be, Taylor. It's a bit of a madhouse. <laughs> Come on, Jaden. <laughs> so I am so excited to be sharing music with you this morning. And um, I really want to hope you sing loud. So, but as for me, your strength shall be my song of joy. At each and every sunrise, my lyrics of your love will fill the air. For you have been my glory fortress, a stronghold in my day of distress. O oh, my strength, I sing with joy your praises. O oh, my stronghold, I sing with joy your song. O oh, my saviour, I sing with joy the lyrics of your faithful love for me. Amen. <laughs> They're pretty cool words. So let's... Uh, in this time, we can actually stand on the promises that God's made. So let's sing that song, shall we? Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises. such a beautiful name it's so much power let's sing to him you are the word of the beginning one with God the Lord most high your hidden glory in creation now he Thank you. 
at the back of this current series of messages. We're dealing, of course, with COVID-19. Got the opportunity uh, this week to write an article for our local newspaper, The Scene, which is publishing again this week. What do you say to a community uh, when we know that many are reeling with the shock and the impact of COVID-19, uh, particularly the economic impact? The question is as relevant today, though, for believers as it is for those just in the community. What has God got to do with all of this? What's he up to? What does it mean? What? How do we get through? The short answer is that God's response started with Easter. Basically, he has already shown in Easter what he has done about life for us today. We've been following through a short section from the book of Romans where Paul's been explaining what was accomplished in the death and resurrection of Jesus. He's been writing about the way, about how to be put right with God, the new way. New because everything changed with Jesus. Friendship with God doesn't come as a reward for good behavior or good religion or good deeds. I'm sorry if you've been really trying hard in that way. And most of us do try hard there. But trying hard here will not give you friendship with God. Friendship with God comes through faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So when we're dealing with life's issues, whether that be to do with COVID-19 or paying the bills or looking after a family, looking after a business, we need to know that the only bargaining chip we have with God is his goodness. We don't possess a thing that can force his hand or twist his arm. There's nothing we have over him. We can't accuse him of being cruel or unfair or negligent. Nothing. We live and enjoy the blessings that come our way only because he is outrageously good. That's just how he is toward us. And as our passage today will show crystal clear. I'd like to read this morning from Romans 5, 6 to 11. Romans 5, 6 to 11. You might want to turn with it. Just a short passage today. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him. For if when we were God's enemies we were reconciled to him through the death of a son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. God, help us with your word. Bless this time. Let's dive in here. Verse 6. You see, God does things at the right time. That doesn't mean at the last minute. God works to a plan. Mark records the launch of the ministry of Jesus like this. He said, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Here's a difference between us and God. Mostly we want things done yesterday. We think we're doing well when a job is done quicker or quicker. Time is limited. And in many situations, of course, it's a limited resource. But Father has all the time in the world. He has eternity at hand. So he sees things differently. He's looking to bring into alignment lots of different factors to achieve the result he's after. Talk about waiting for the planets to come into alignment. He's much more interested in the right time than doing things in a hurry. 
then because he moves at the right time, God can accomplish more in 20 minutes because everything is in alignment than what we might achieve in 20 years because we're juggling so many balls. Or we wish you could. What an art it is to learn to move with him. To not get stressed or agitated, but to walk with him. Christ died for the ungodly. What does that mean? In the great wars, of course, many have lost their lives for king and country. And we honour the sacrifice. Those who went away to fight knew the risk. They wanted to live, but something had to be done to keep safe those they loved. And many died defending their family, their home, their land from an invader. Truly, greater love has no one than this than they lay down their lives for his friends. In the heat of battle, some may even have dared to die to save a stranger, but at least they're on the same side. So then, what's so special about the way Jesus died? Jesus came to die. Jesus died not just to save his family and friends, he came to save and die and save the enemy. Verse 8 says, While we were still sinners, that means enemies of God, Christ died for us. You can't give more than your life, but Christ gave his life to save those who hated him. Here God proves his love for us and he shows us that his love is of a different order to anything found in the human heart. So we, as we face things in life, we have to know that God wants his best for us. His attitude toward us does not go in and come out like the tide. Paul's developing his case. His reasoning goes like a staircase up, up, up and up. And he writes here in verse 9, Since we've now been put right with God by the blood of Christ, by the blood of Christ, notice the past tense, we have been put right. It does not say we're being being put right, or perhaps sometime in the future we will be made right. It is a done deal. Paul uses the legal term justified, and we talked about that last week. It doesn't matter what you think of yourself. Never mind the technicalities. We have been legally put right with God. If you have someone with you, turn to them and say, uh, you've been put right with God by the blood of Jesus Christ. You've been put right with God by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is what it's saying. It's time we set aside our religious doubts all about this, all our fears, all our worries about this, it's done. We, we are, as it were, in a different legal place now than what we were. Now we live like we believe it. That's the challenge. Living like we believe it. Then up another step. Paul says, how much more then? Because we've been put right with God, we've escaped what was coming to us in his judgment and anger. People don't like the thought that God gets angry. Well, some do maybe. But we've escaped that. Paul has earlier made clear that all have sinned and fallen short of the God's glory. That's true whether you're a goody or a baddie. All have fallen short. But now by the blood of Christ, we've escaped God's judgment and anger. Verse 10, still another step. How much more, Paul says, if we can accept that God is able to take us in one holy swoop from being enemies to being reconciled, he can save us utterly by his life. And that didn't take special training or special therapy or a special course. God was able and is willing just to do it because after the cross came his resurrection. If we can accept it because of the cross, how much more because of his resurrection? 
we're not here just by the skin of our teeth, friends. We are saved through his blood and his life. That's the life, the blood and life of Jesus, not us. We're saved by his blood and his life. His life now is active in the believer. There is a power for good, for hope, for love on the inside of us. He's working to bring out in us the fullest expression of his reconciliation. Has God got a job on? Yes, he's bringing what he's done legally out in us. We've gone from being enemies to being reconciled. Now, how do you think this might show? Well, one way it might show is if we're like this, we become like that. We've got everything to smile about, everything to have hope for, everything to look up to and forward to. Verse 11. Not only is this so, here's another step in Paul's reasoning. But we get to rejoice. This is way better than I'm having a good day today. I have gone from being an enemy to being reconciled with the God of heaven and earth. You and I are on God's side and he is on ours. So, as we get to see how things play out through our current crisis, we need to know, based on that first Easter, that God is for us. Don't drop your lip. Lift your praise. Never ever doubt his love towards you. Now, if you're in need, ask him for help. Keep trusting him. Revival has to happen in here before it will happen in the world. Pray for those around you that they would know this too. We have a wonderful message in the gospel. What Jesus did for us through that first Easter ripples through to us today. And no matter what we face, he's an assurance that if this cost God so much, it's an assurance he's with us in our day to day. Rachel and Philip and the family are going to lead us in our next song today.
Thank you, team. Let's pray, shall we? Let's pray. Father, we know that when we come to you to pray, we're not twisting your arm. We're not forcing you in any way. We come to you because of your mercy and your goodness. And Lord, we want to uh, share in the love you have for this world and to walk, learn to walk in your goodness. So we pray for those around us who are in different kinds of need today. We ask, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit on this community, that those who are far from you, those who have dismissed you as irrelevant, those who think that they can get by fine without you, we pray that you would uh, touch their hearts and minds, that they would know that you are the God who saves, and without salvation, we're in trouble. Lord, have in your mercy touched their lives. Help them see. We pray that uh, those who are struggling financially, perhaps they've lost their job or their, their hours have been reduced or perhaps they're in business and the, the cash flow just isn't there. We pray that, Lord, you'd help them walk with you, to trust you and that day by day you would build uh, their resources, build their strength, build their ability in Jesus' name. Lord, we know you provide. Pray that you bless in Jesus' name. We pray for those who are struggling for hope. But the people, the officials are really concerned about the mental well-being of um, many in New Zealand. We're tired of being uh, cooped up. Not to um, to speak negatively, but Lord, we know that you give hope, you give life, you give purpose, and so we pray for those who are struggling particularly with. Uh, feeling really low, that you would lift them up, you'd turn their frown into a smile, that you'd help them know that they are loved beyond any measure of human love. You, are, you love them with a love from heaven. Help them, Lord, to know that they matter to you. And so restore. And whether that restoration comes through an encouraging word or a contact from someone else, help them, Lord, to know and receive it. We pray, God, for those who are struggling with health. Um, in all the attention being given to COVID-19, there are others that, with heart conditions, with lungs, with um, different forms of cancer, with mobility issues. Lord, would you heal as a way of encouraging and building up and showing your kingdom? Would you heal now as people hear uh, this message that they would know that you are the God who heals. You are the God that loves. You are the God who has all power. Bless in Jesus' name. We pray, God, for our leaders. We thank you for the way in which they care, are caring for this nation. We pray that uh, you would grant wisdom, that as decisions are made day by day, that the moves, the right moves are made at the right step, at, at the... Um, at the right times and that God you would uh, just save us uh, and save this nation uh, save us to know you and save us Lord for the uh, our economy and our life together bring fullness and wholeness and enjoyment Lord you're a good God you're not a stingy God and so we we lift these things to you we come knowing you're a merciful and a good God we pray that the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, God bless you. I'm glad you could be with us today and we'll be back here again uh, next Sunday morning at 9am. Um, God bless you. God keep you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.